Cal State Fullerton's The Report. News, views, and info to go. I'm Sarah Fenton. I'm Tucker Tashton. And I'm Valerie Stratferman. The school gets some new equipment for online shopping and a new billboard. Also, the library is still in trouble. Another commencement speaker has been announced, and there are some new crowdfunding projects made to finance projects at school. The Daily Titan and OC Register strike a new deal. A 10-acre forest is in the perfect place in the Yorba Linda Hills for an adventure outdoors. And what's an exolim? We'll find out. California State University Executive Vice Chancellor and Chief Academic Officer Ephraim P. Smith announced his retirement scheduled for the end of this month. He has been with the CSU Chancellor's Office since 2010 after serving in different capacities here at Cal State Fullerton back in the 90s. Are you considering riding a bike to campus? If so, think about attending a bicycle safety class offered at the University Police Emergency Operations Center on Friday, May 16th from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Well, while there, you'll learn more about bicycle safety for both bicyclists and vehicle drivers. You can sign up through your Titan portal or call 657-278-7233 for more information. ROTC cadets from Cal State Fullerton will be commissioning on Friday, May 16th at 10 a.m. in the Engineering Building. Cadets from other colleges and universities will also be present. Once the cadets are commissioned, they'll be the new officers and most will have about a year of officer training to their assigned branches before reporting to their respective duty stations, either in the U.S. or abroad. The school year is winding down and finals are approaching. ASI is hosting its biannual all-night study program from now until May 16th. The Titan Student Union will stay open 24 hours, offering group and individual study spaces, free Wi-Fi, wireless printing, public computer stations, tutoring, and numerous events designed to help students relieve stress. Head on over to asi.fullerton.edu to get a complete list of the scheduled events. The College of Communications will have a new interim dean starting June 1st. Irene Matz is the current associate dean of the College of Communications, and she will step up as the interim dean after the retirement of William Briggs, who served as the dean of the college since 2011. ASI has approved the purchase and installation of a new electronic billboard. The billboard will be located above the Student Financial Services Building and scheduled to be operational during the fall 2014 semester. The board will be 4 feet 8 inches tall and 4 feet 1 inch wide. The project has an estimated cost of about $106,000. This board was approved in a desire for ASI to reach out to students who don't spend much time near the Titan Student Union. The TSU already has multiple displays in its building. The new billboard will be the first to be placed on the opposite end of campus. Despite moving the staff to the first two and three levels of the Pollock Library South, it will continue to be closed until the end of summer. This is a result of the damage obtained from earthquakes that took place in the late March. The damage include damaged ceilings and ventilation systems. The university is currently considering multiple options to repair for the range from $500,000 to $6 million in cost. A decision won't be made until after university commencement ceremonies. Our very own Tucker Tashton has the story. Let's take a look. The SAT exam is the most widely used entrance exam for college-bound students.
students planning on taking the SAT should prepare for major changes. Alyssa Flores has more on this story. College Board has announced major changes for its SAT exam. Fewer answer choices, less time to complete the exam, and making the once mandatory essay only optional are among the major changes coming spring 2016. However, while the exam is becoming simpler for students, it hasn't gotten easier. The assessment is not to make it easier in any way, but it's, it's matching the styles and the trends of what education are moving towards, which is college and career readiness, and away from um, simple memorization. So on the SAT, traditionally what you're doing is you're doing a bunch of prep, but for things that you weren't necessarily um, exposed to in high school, where the new changes that are college and career readiness are definitely geared towards what it is you need to know as a freshman going into college. Universities now face the question of whether they'll require the optional essay from students. Requirements for the Cal State system will remain the same. Students applying here at Cal State Fullerton will only be required to take the math and reading portions of the exam. The new exam will also affect the way that students prepare as it has become more similar to their curriculum in high school. Now so many of these organizations that do test prep is all about test strategies, about teaching the students uh, eliminate this answer, eliminate this answer, and I think they're going to go to content base. I think the questions are going to be based on the student finding their answers through their own prior knowledge. Further information about the SAT exam, including resources available to students and parents, is available online at sat.collegeboard.org. Reporting from Cal State Fullerton, I'm Melissa Flores. Representative Loretta Sanchez will speak at the commencement ceremony taking place May 18th. She says it is an honor to speak at her mother and brother's alma mater. She previously addressed the graduating class of 1997. Sanchez is the representative of California's 46th Congressional District and oversees cities in northern Orange County. An empty Fullerton Plaza has transformed into the life of the party as Farmer's Market came into town. Fullerton Farmer's Market is here for the people who want to get fresh, locally grown produce straight from the farms and enjoy a great family time. Carly Robbins has the story. Here in the heart of downtown Fullerton, this empty plaza turns into the life of the city every Thursday night. The Farmer's Market provides local residents with tons of fresh produce. It is an excellent place to get healthy food and to help support your neighbor's green thumb. All of the fruits and vegetables are grown in SoCal and are all organic. Some of the choices include broccoli and onions, a ton of different types of avocados and tangerines, and of course, blueberries, raspberries, and strawberries. Tons of small businesses come out to farmer's markets just like these to make a name for themselves. Right now I'm about to try some of Zama's blueberry green tea. Delicious. <laughs> Avocado oil products, Sola's jams and salsas, and Bubba Foods hummus are all independently owned goods that provide residents with something original. It's just a small bakery. It's a husband and a wife who own it. And they got the recipes from the wife who's from Indonesia. Yeah, so they just like make all this stuff in a bakery in Anaheim and then we take it out to farmers markets and sell all their stuff. <laughs> so what's your most popular item? Parmesan crisp, Parmesan. which is just a cracker made of all cheese. Everybody loves that it's like, you know, low carbs, low calorie, and it's delicious. The Fullerton Farmers Market every Thursday, and it's a seasonal market from April till October. And we've been doing this market, I'd say, about 10 years now. As you can tell, it's a big party here. I love this market. Uh, our customers have become our friends, and you know, when the, when the season shuts down, we still hang out together and go out to dinner together. This is a great place to buy tons of fresh produce and unique items like my new organic avocado lotion all while connecting with community. Reporting from Fullerton, I'm Carly Robbins. University Advancement is helping provide student groups and organizations with assistance in their major projects. The program has selected four projects in its pilot experiment to see what funding goals can be attract potential donors. One group already benefiting from the experiment is a team of 13 mechanical engineering students building an unmanned aerial vehicle. The group had already raised more than $1,600 of their $5,000 goal within a few days. Other funding groups include the Guardian Scholars Summer Support Fund, Bridge to Success, and the DC Scholars Program. CSUF students are always looking for ways to help those in the community. 
graduate student Armi Zioli understands that lending a hand can make a significant impact to, to those that have fallen on hard times. Students at California State University Fullerton have much more than getting a degree on their agenda, but also giving back to the community along the way. Graduate student Amy Zioli made it her mission last Christmas to organize a goodie bag giveaway for the homeless. The group of both student and city volunteers will be making their way to the Fullerton Bus Depot as well as canvassing streets and parking structures where the homeless are known to stay. ASI's new leaders are thinking of new ways to reach out to their student peers. Recently elected ASI President Harpreet Bath and his running mate Michael Badal plan to use this summer in order to get to know their resources and campus leaders. They plan to make an online feedback form for students to communicate to their leaders what they want to see at the school. The DO also has planned to organize open office hours in order to speak directly to the students. The rest of their executive staff includes Vice President of Finance Gary Au, Chief Governmental Officer Kelsey Brewer, Chief Communications Officer Jonathan Kwa, and Chief Administration Officer Olivia Green. CSUF and the Orange County Register have extended their weekly section contract. The OC Register already has a weekly feature that focuses on CSUF and plans to extend its contract. There's no word on how much the deal costs, but the section will continue to run in newsstands on campus and included in the Wednesday issue of the newspaper. The CSUF is not the only school that OC Register has st struck a deal with. Previously, deals with UC Irvine and Chapman University to publish weekly sections focused on them were made. The deals have caused some controversy in the past, but CSUF hopes the weekly section will continue to promote the school. For gender neutral, going to public restrooms is a serious issue. CSUF hopes to lessen those issues by providing gender neutral restrooms to any person who requires use of them. ASI Chief Administration Officer Carlos Navarro has been advocating for the implementation of the restrooms. He plans for single-stalled restrooms to be relabeled as gender-neutral restrooms to be used by transgender and gender non-conforming individuals, as well as parents or other guardians of small children, caregivers, and people who are breastfeeding. He also hopes that future buildings constructed on campus will include one of these types of restrooms. Looking for a place to study and take your mind off the hectic city life? A local park, Carbon Canyon Regional Park, provides a place of quiet and peace and a breathtaking view of the forest which contains one of the biggest trees in all of California. Here's Valley Shrepperman with the story. The Carbon Canyon Regional Park provides a surplus of outdoor activities and wildlife for those looking to conveniently escape the city. The park was created in 1975 after the land below the Carbon Canyon Dam was leased to Orange County. Few people know that they can get the taste of the redwoods in Southern California. At Carbon Canyon Regional Park in Brea, a 10-acre slice of the redwoods is here in the park. A cemented trail circles this grove of over 200 sequoia redwoods. Onlookers also have the option to explore amongst the trees to get a closer look. The redwood trees are huge. I mean, I can't even wrap my arms around them. These coastal redwoods are the biggest of all single living organisms, and they can range to about an average of 400 feet. Not surprisingly, they're known as the biggest trees in the world. 
Frequent watering designed to mimic the wet conditions of the tree's natural environment has kept these giants alive since their settlement in 1975. Diligent upkeep and the respect of sightseers also keeps this park in top condition. You know, I'm personally someone who's like, I like kind of like the nature foresty areas. You know, to me, I think they're just more of a relaxed little area just to go in, kind of clear your mind, or even, you know, if you want to just get some studying work done. You don't have to go far to experience the wonders of nature. Conveniently located off of the 57 in Lincoln, Carbon Canyon Regional Park is the perfect place to explore outdoors with the ones you love. There are a host of clubs and organizations available on campus, but one team most people don't know about is the roller hockey team. Steve Granado gives us a look. Roller hockey may not be the first thing that comes to mind when mentioning dominant athletics at Cal State Fullerton. But CSUF club roller hockey is quickly becoming a more well-known club sport on campus. Club sports offer more options for students to play in the tight and blue and orange. And after a hiatus that halted roller hockey from competing, they're getting back in the game. Yeah, we started last year and this is our, our second year. And we have actually have two teams now. So there's a, our team, which is D2, and the B team. So the program's really growing. Since returning, Fullerton is 39-0-1 in WCRHL league play and have won their second straight Division II Regional Championship after having a perfect 20-win, no-loss overall record in the 2013-2014 season. The Titans are a dominant force in the Division II Western Collegiate Roller Hockey League. They continue to break records, even in their brief two-year history. Yeah, we played a couple of D1 teams this year. Um, one that's actually in the D1 Championship game right now. Uh, upset them in Santa Barbara, upset Long Beach in Santa Barbara. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're just out here playing hockey. The team will now head to Ashton, Pennsylvania for the national championship of hopes of bringing home their first ever Division II title after just missing victory last season. From Corona, I'm Steve Granato, The Report. There is a stigma with pole dancers, but they're a group of people who consider it a rigorous workout. Let's take a look at the world of pole dancing. Helping to keep spirits up, patients at Children's Hospital of Orange County are experiencing a different kind of hospital visit. Hollywood's very own Ryan Seacrest has created a nonprofit organization which brings a broadcast media center to air live shows for the children located on the second floor of the Children's Hospital of Orange County is Seacrest Studios, a media center ran by interns and volunteers who broadcast live shows for the children. Let's take a look. Here at the Children's Hospital of Orange County, kids are actually looking forward to their doctor visits. Located on the second floor of the Bill Holmes Tower is Seacrest Studios, a state-of-the-art media center led by interns and volunteers who broadcast live shows for the children. Hollywood's multi-hyphenate host Ryan Seacrest and his family decided to start a nonprofit organization to give back using his talents in broadcast media. This began what's known as the Ryan Seacrest Foundation, which builds fully equipped media centers in pediatric hospitals like the one you see behind me to educate and entertain patients through interactive radio and television shows. The first initiative is building these 
broadcast media studios, which are called Seacrest Studios, into the lobbies of pediatric children's hospitals. And people, you know, you use these studios to let the kids learn all about new media and television and radio, and they get to come down and make their own uh, show. Not only are patients frequently greeted by Hollywood celebrities, volunteers visit the children in their rooms to hand out crafts, and to encourage patients to call in to win prizes while watching the live broadcast on their television screen. They'll be able to see exactly what's going on in the studio and, and listen to what we're, we're doing down here. Or they can come down to the studio and, and be a part of the program uh, live as it's happening. Uh, we actually go as far as to even teach them how to use the equipment and uh, it's, it's very empowering for them to be able to be here and, and have a good time. With the unique approach of using media to help patients cope with their illness, Chalk has conducted a research to determine the benefits of having a Seacrest Studios. Studies show that the request for pain medication has decreased and the overall satisfaction and idea of a hospital has become a positive experience for both patients and family members. For more information on how to get involved, head over to RyanSeacrestFoundation.org. The ECS Student Projects Showcase and Awards held on Friday, May 9th featured work from CSUF students. The event is being held by the College of Engineering and Computer Science and allows students to present their projects to invitation-only industry partners. Mechanical engineering students Larry Tilliazzi, Brian Holloway, Villain, Michael Villavesier, Justin Chin, and Salar Nasratabadi competed against nine other teams where industry partner judges award monetary prizes. Their project, the Exolim, was made to replace typical underarm crutches used by people with lower limb injuries with a new hands-free crutch. The U.S. Open of Surfing is going back to its roots as city officials crack down on those who turned the surf competition into a riot last year. Kelsey Tyne shares changes coming to this year's competition. Each summer, thousands of people visit Huntington Beach for the annual U.S. Open of Surfing. The competition takes over three quarter miles of beach on the south side of the pier, but this year's visitors will notice some changes to the setup. Last year's Open was marred with riots on the final day and the event's owner, IMG, along with the city, decided to discontinue events and focus more on the sport. Rioters tipped over port of potties and vandalized stores on Main Street, resulting in thousands of dollars in property damage and the city paid for the cleanup. Over the last few years, the U.S. Open became more of a spectacle than a surf competition. After last year's riots, residents complained and now the city is taking action to bring it back to its roots. People like running and talking about the fight that was going on and then a couple guys actually started bragging about how they had taken the stop signs and um, I guess they had smashed the window here at the bike store, lit things on fire and threw a bottle at a police officer. Police will be deploying more officers to the downtown task force and there will be no more live concerts, reduced vendors and no passing out freebies according to the plans. Which is what we're here for surf, watch the surf competitions, and you see it. You see it starting to boil. Huntington were whores. They poured out our city, you know, like who will come, who will pay. We have enough people coming here. With the U.S. Open beginning July 26th, residents are hopeful that the local restrictions will help businesses like Easy Rider behind me to avoid cleaning up a mess after. From Huntington Beach, Kelsey Tyne. Well, that does it for this episode of The Report. Join us next time for more up-to-date news, views, and info to go. Thank you. I'm Sarah Fenton. I'm Tucker Tashin. And I'm Valerie Strutterman. Stay fresh for this time.